Today, friends, I'm going to show you how to do a front view sketch using Tinkercad with my F22. So let's get cracking. So friends, people have been asking, how do I do a front view after I've done a sketch of another view? You grab one here that is simple like this. I'm going to just use my screen capture tool. I've got a keyboard shortcut so I can grab it super quick. I like this one because it's going to be easier to work with in a minute. I need to save it as a PNG. I've got a button that does that in one click. I am using Snagit. Whatever tool you use to do your screen captures is fine. Next up, we're going to use Pick SVG and we're going to upload that picture. Of course, we bounce to my screenshots folder and it's right here. When I bring in, it starts with what they call the edge version. I don't want this one. I almost always use the internal and I like internal number two. This is going to give me the outside edges, which is super slick for tracing. I'm going to save it to my downloads folder and I'm going to call it F22 and I'm going to put the word front in it so I can keep track of it. All right, so super quickly, I've got a tutorial I will link in the description that shows how to make one of these from scratch. This is way before the new sketch tool, but I want to highlight something I hear a lot. Users say, hey, slow your videos down. Friends, you are totally in charge of the playback speed. Simply click on this gear and you can pick whatever speed you want. Cut me down by three quarters, a half, 0.25. I had some kids that I taught that bumped it all the way up to 2x. Whatever speed you want, you get to pick. So quickly, in case you haven't played with Tinkercad before, this is Tinkercad.com. I always choose sign in with Google, and right now I'm going to search for my F22. This is my F22 with, of course, the tutorial included. Notice when you click on this, it mentions the tutorial. You can find it right here. Of course, you can hit View in 3D, and because it's my project, I could choose Tinker this. Instead of tinkering my real project, though, I want to click on the gear and make a duplicate. That way, any changes I make right now do not affect the real project. After a moment, the project loads, and there is my Scratch F22. I'm going to quickly swap the colors back and get it ready for editing. Lastly, I'm going to hit W and put the work plane back on the ground. Users want to know how to do sketch from a front view. Let me show you what this means. If I bring in sketch, right now I'll be from the top, and I could trace this design and make it smarter using the sketch tool. Sketch tool gives us all sorts of bezier curves. I've got a ton of tutorials in a playlist you can check out. You can also watch the feature preview. This has fantastic animations and five different screens of cool stuff that'll help you get better with the sketch tool. When you're done checking it out, you can hit finish. You can always check the preview. And once again, don't forget my tutorials. I'm going to hit finish sketch because I don't want to build that one. And I want to show you the complaint people have. They want to do a front view and they haven't been able to figure it out. We're going to do that in two steps. First, I'm going to bring out what I'm going to call a sacrificial cube. I am also going to import that front view that we got a moment ago. Of course, I stored mine in my downloads. It's called F22 front. When you import a shape, I will switch to art that does a smaller version of the file. And then I'm going to pick the size. This is 200 max. So I'm going to just take this and make it 180 and press enter. It scales both of them and we can choose import. Now there is our cool front view. Of course, we want to do the front view in this direction, so I'm going to stand it up. Notice when we use rotation, inside this circle is 22 and a half degrees per click. If you hold down shift, it's 45 degrees per click, so it's super fast. I'm going to do D to drop. All right, so real quickly, I like to have this lined up, but check this out. If we set this to center, there is no way that is correct. So I'm going to just get close for this project. I would likely, if I was really trying to solve this, find a better front view than this one. I do have the quality all the way to the max. I'm going to stay with that fill mode. And now let's bring out the sketch tool. Now the sketch tool is 20 by 20. So I'm trying to line it up exactly with that square. When I bring it in, I can set it down just like that. If you want to back out and adjust it, you can. What I did here, though, was make it so that my center was closer to the center of this front view. 
Now that we've dropped that on there, you can see up here, we really do have a look at the front view and you would use your curve mode to trace it. I'm going to show you this super quick because I don't really need it. I've got lots of videos that teach you about these better. I'm going to switch to curve mode though, and I'm going to pick any spot to start. I'm going to switch my snap grid to off so I can trace exactly. And we simply click and click and hold to make bezier curves. That's following pretty close. I'm gonna move out here and the fewer curves you do, the better for making these as smooth as you want. Notice we can adjust them afterwards. I'm gonna bend this corner with two pretty straight lines. Notice all I did was click and stretch. Once again, I'm going out towards the point. Then I'm going to zoom in with the scroll wheel, click bend, click bend, bring it down click and hold so that it follows and you can just follow this shape all the way around click and hold when you want to turn it's off but don't worry we're going to fix it later you can pan using the shortcut or pushing in your scroll wheel and then here's another hack i would really only do half of this so check this out i'm going to go back to what i think is my center point and i'm just going to finish with this half click and bend and then click and finish once we've got that half built, we can double click to edit the points. I want to delete these, so I'm going to hit the number four, which is that button right there. Pop, pop, those are gone. Now I'm going to hit V to go back to edit mode. Notice if you don't do that, it'll delete things. If you really wanted it there, you can do control Z to bring it back. There's my V to go to edit mode. Right now, this has got a curve in it. See how we can bend that? I'm going to do control Z, and I'm going to hit the number one to switch that to a line. I'm going to move this point out here to where I think that middle should have been and should have been. And then if I go over here, this is what we call a smooth corner. I can move that close to where I want, but I can also switch to number three, which is a broken corner, and now I can adjust them independently. So I've got this pretty close, and I've got this pretty close to what I want. I can come back to this one, and I want to make this a number three as well. Notice when I hit number two, it went to smooth mode. Three is what goes to broken mode. You could use these down here. And then boom, you can get these to fit exactly the way you want. There's that click and bingo, that click. Then finally this, I want to switch with number one back to a straight line. That my friends is a super fast intro to a sketch. Of course, I've got a lot more tutorials you can watch. This one, I have not really got a lot of interest in being perfect. I just want you to see how to do these front views and get used to modifying points. When I do finish sketch, of course, there is half number one. To make the rest of our front view of our car or jet or whatever you're playing with, we would simply do control D, hit W for work plane, click on this edge and do D to drop. Now, of course, it's the wrong way, but are you ready for this? M for mirror and bam, you have just built your front view using the epic Tinkercad sketch tool. Friends, as I wrap up, I do want to apologize for the raspy voice. These allergies are flat out killing me. Friends, I do want to say thank you to everybody that support me via my YouTube memberships. Three different levels of perks, and of course, every bit of support is appreciated. I do also want to thank everybody that's chosen to support me via Patreon. Absolutely love how that group is growing. You can learn more with the bit.ly up above or the links in the description. Finally, friends, I want to thank you for watching. Don't forget every time you hit that like button, share a video, add a comment down below, or smash subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day, and keep tinkering.